the idea with this call is to give you a, a high level overview of the tender that we have launched and respond to a, queries that have been sent in over email. Uh, and towards the end of the end of the call, we will have some time to take some questions. Uh, if your questions aren't already answered with the FAQs that we've put together. But if you have any questions, please do put them in the chat box. So giving you a background of um, Selco Foundation's Energy for Health project, uh, Selco Foundation is an open source uh, nonprofit organization that is focused on climate sustainability to alleviate poverty. And this particular program, uh, Energy for Health, has been designed to make a large impact on India's public health facilities. So both sides of that energy for health are very critical to us, right? So on the one side of that equation, we have energy where we use decentralized solar rooftop solar to power remote rural health centers. But critically for this conversation and this tender, the for health side is where we look at how we can help build climate resilient health centers of the future. And this is where we're reaching out for help from our partners. And that's the reason this tender has been opened. So briefly, this will be the agenda for this call. I think we aim to uh, have this for about 30 minutes and then take questions at the end. Uh, so we just go over the background of the program, a little bit of the work done so far. Uh, we'd like to talk about how we view innovative medical technologies because that can be uh, you know, kind of a vague word. And so we would like to explain what that actually means for us. Uh, we'll talk about our focus geographies. We'll talk about the multi-phase approach that has been described in the tender and where we want knowledge partners to come in and help us across multiple stages. We will go through a quick problem statement, solution stack, and potential outcomes, just to give you a sense of the kind of uh, problem statements, statements we are expecting to come out of this uh, program. We will go through an explanation of the unit costing, because I know that that might be a, a confusing one on how we are looking at pricing this tender. And then we'll go over FAQs and uh, the queries that we've received. So, so far, this there's a bunch of work that's already been done on this, on this program. More than 2,000 facilities have already been uh, impacted through rooftop solar and innovative med tech. Uh, the overall goal is to do 25,000 facilities across 12 states. And actually, the way we see our high-level goal is to build model processes for public health interventions at a global level. So can we build um, you know, model procurement processes, intervention processes, model med tech uh, okay. solution stacks that look at particular public health problem statements and can we make them applicable to even global geographies? So our goal with this program is to really have a global impact by doing 25,000 facilities in India. As you can imagine, this is amongst the largest or actually the largest public health program that has been launched in the world. Uh, and 25,000 facilities, is a, it's a very ambitious program. And that's one of the reasons why we are looking to reach out to partners so that when we are, are making an impact on the public health system, the impact is contextual to the actual problem statements and has a lens on med tech as a, one, of the, one of the areas that can solve for these problem statements. Now within med tech, one of the things that we're looking at is, can we increase access to decentralized health? Increasing access to decentralized health by default reduces the transactional cost of people seeking out health. So can we reduce transactional costs? Can we increase access to decentralized health? Can we reduce wastage, for example, of vaccines and other temperature sensitive commodities? These are the key ways we look at you know, our health program. Uh, like I said, we've already done more than 2,000 facilities across eight states in India. And over the next couple of years, our goal is to reach 25,000. So briefly, what is our actual lens on medical technologies, right? So in, in that Venn diagram on the left, you can see there are three things that, that inform our thinking around what fits into our, our med tech interventions. One is, is our equipment energy efficient. So we've had many examples in recent times where because of the scale of this program, we are able to actually convince manufacturers of medical technologies to say that how can my, my device actually have a lower power consumption? And that can be done in multiple ways. You can have efficient, efficient power management, or you could create decentralized 
uh, health service models, both of those ways are to kind of have energy efficiency into your, into your equipment, right? Second, is it future ready? Particularly, we are following the mandate set by SDG3, where uh, the goal is to have universal health coverage by 2030. And so can we build climate resilient, futuristic health centers that actually allow for uh, you know, high resilience, allow for low transactional cost, and allow for lower access or easier access to health services? Third is, is it meeting a public health need? So clearly one of our focus areas is, is this is a public health program. So where these three criteria meet is, is you know, broadly our in intersection. Now, I would like to specify here that this isn't a hard and fast, hard rule, right? That we, we will only look at med tech that meets, this, meets these needs. This is a way we think about how our interventions need to impact the health services at these health facilities. This is a pretty broad area and it's a pretty debatable area as well. So when, when our partners are submitting proposals with innovative med tech, we'll always look at a justification to say that, is it actually meeting this lens of our medical technologies? To the right, you see our focus geographies. It's the 12 states. And again, in the tender, we have listed out the 12 states that we are intending to uh, impact. These 12 states are the um, seven, eight states of the Northeast, plus Odisha, Jharkhand, select districts of Karnataka and select districts of Gujarat. So we do have uh, had some people have asked this question over email is that, do we limit our proposals to work in these 12 states? And the answer is yes, that we do want to limit our work because these are our areas of focus. Just to talk through the multiple phases of the program, uh, again, there's been some questions uh, over email that can, can participants submit their proposals for individual phases. And this is not something that we, we want to do. We actually want our partners to take responsibility across the four phases. So I'll just quickly talk through the phases. Um, phase one is research where we expect the partners to, through primary and secondary research, find relevant problem statements in the public health space, right? Phase two, can we now build solution stacks that actually address these problem statements? And the solution stacks could be a set of medical technologies. For example, there's an example given in, in the tender document itself. If you're looking at the cold chain management of a whole, of a whole district, can you, can you have a stack of tech that looks at the district vaccine storage to uh, solar direct drive refrigerators to um, portable active vaccine carriers, right? So that would be a whole stack of solutions. And, and you could think of such solution stacks in different disease areas. So that's phase two. Can you propose solution stacks? Phase three is, can you support Celco Foundation in the deployment of these medical technologies and these solution stacks? Again, the primary responsibility for, de <laughs> for deployment sits with Celco Foundation. But the tender lists out the responsibility for the knowledge partner to actually help us define the procurement guidelines, help us do a site assessment, um, and help us operationalize the, the solution stacks in these geographies. So there is a role that our partners play in that deployment stage as well. Um, and then once the deployment, one of the key roles in the deployment stage is also monitoring and monitoring and evaluation. So can you actually... Uh, build a ME plan to see that is the solution stack actually meeting the problem stated from phase one, right? And finally, uh, phase four is outreach where we want our knowledge partners to help us design an outreach program that includes webinars, conferences, roundtables. What are the ways that we can get the word out about you know, the public health impact that we're making? So this is just listing a example problem statement just to give give everyone on the call a sense of how we're thinking about problem statements right i i don't want to go into too much detail on this problem statement itself this is just an example um but if you were to have a problem statement that said that can we improve the diagnosis and treatment of sickle cell anemia in that space how specifically can we define the background like it is defined here there's a scientific rationale for why sickle cell anemia what is sickle cell anemia what are the numbers where it says approximately 300,000 newborns are diagnosed each year, and it predominantly affects individuals of African, Mediterranean, 
Middle Eastern and South Asian descent. Again, in India, approximately one in 86 births of the tribal population carry the gene. This is the amount of detailing we expect when a problem statement is presented to us, right? And once we have that problem statement, how does that problem statement actually address, uh, get addressed by a solution stack, which is very medical technology oriented? Because there could be many problem statements that do not require any med, med tech intervention. But the goal of this program in particular, because public health, as you know, is a, is a very broad space. This program is looking at med tech solving for public health. So how does, for example, in the case of sickle cell anemia, the NHM has, has built a three-pillar strategy, health promotion, prevention, holistic management, and continuum of care. Now, each of these pillars can potentially be addressed by med tech. You could have health promotion, which requires genetic counseling. You can do that genetic counseling <clears throat> through telemedicine. You can also have digital apps that have awareness building for last mile users. You can have prevention through point of care, screening devices. Um, this is not a comprehensive list, but this is just a direction for the thinking. How do you, how do you think about med tech solving for these public health programs through the lens of how the NHM actually wants to solve it, right? So this is, you know, at a high level, we wanted to give you a sense of how a solution stack can be built. And finally, in terms of outcomes, the goal with the outcomes is to be as specific as possible. Can we put the actual numbers on what is the intended impact and what is the timeline of that impact? And can the ME program actually measure against <laughs> that stated impact and those numbers? Again, here we will look for very scientific, measurable problem statements, backgrounds, and outcomes. So if you have any questions around that, please reach out to us. But uh, just trying to emphasize that it has to be a pretty comprehensively thought through problem statement and the outcomes. A quick note on the unit costing. Uh, the way Selco Foundation is looking into unit costing is that we consider three problem statements and solving problems in one region, which is about three districts, as one unit. Now, unit for us is primarily a budgetary kind of function. It serves a budgetary function, wherein, um, for example, if you take improved identification and diagnosis of sickle cell anemia in tribal populations, problem statement one, improve cold chain infrastructure to maximize vaccination coverage, problem statement two, establish early diagnosis and treatment of cervical cancer, problem statement three, all of these problem statements for three districts in Odisha, this would be uh, this would be one unit in our consideration, right? Now, again, we've had a lot of questions on uh, can I apply for more than one, uh, you know, for more than one geography, more than one problem statement? Yes, we absolutely encourage that, right? We would encourage you to apply with as many problem statements as possible, justifiable, of course, as many detailed and justify justifiable problem statements as possible. It's just that we will consider every three problem statements in one region to be one unit for our costing purposes. Um, so I'll go into the FAQs. We've had a bunch of questions and some of these we've put out ourselves and uh, the, the others we've added from the questions we've received until now. I'll just talk through these and hopefully these answer most of your questions. But at the end of these FAQs, if you have still more questions, please uh, do let us know. So. Are we encouraging only locally led grassroots organizations to apply? No, we do. We do encourage locally led grassroots organizations to submit their application, but any organization who's involved in public health is invited to be part of this. We do want to work with partners who have two core sets of expertise, public health inter interventions and deployments of medtech innovations. If you think that your organization has expertise in either one of these two, we do encourage you to actually build a consortium and send in an application. But in the case a consortium is built, there will have to be one primary applicant who is actually legally responsible for delivery of all the, you know, the deliverables across the four phases. So can your organization apply for individual phases? Like I said earlier, we, that, is, that is not something that we are allowing for this program. We want applicants to take responsibility across all the four phases. Again, within this, if you believe that your organization has expertise in any one or two of the four phases, and it you you know you would be better served by bringing in partners, we are happy to 
look at consortiums who are jointly applying. Again, in this case, there would there would have to be one primary applicant who is uh, who will have the legal responsibilities for the tender. Uh, in terms of the approximate value, the way we are seeing one unit is about eighteen to twenty lakh rupees. Right, there is no budget ceiling to this, but obviously we'll be looking at the most efficiently prepared proposals and budgets to see, you know, to select our final partners. And like we've said earlier, we're looking at we want, we encourage our partners to do more than just one unit. So you may apply for three, six, or nine problem statements across multiple regions, and appropriately, your budget might be different for that. We And we are encouraging not just one partner, and we have a question on that, but I'll come to that. We're encouraging multiple partners to come forth and, and join on this journey with us. Is the tender open to non-profits only? No, we encourage non-profits, NGOs, and for-profit organizations to submit their proposals. Can my organization apply for this tender limited to a certain geography, such as Meghalaya? Yes, absolutely. Like I've mentioned, the unit includes one region. So you may may send an application for just that one region, say just three districts in Meghalaya. And then we will consider that as one unit. And so you're very welcome if you're, for example, if you're, you, you're connected to an organization that is actually highly, uh, has a lot of expertise in that particular, say, Northeastern state, we very much want to work with you and we'll work with you just for that state. Um, I am a public health researcher and can I apply as an individual? Um, at this point, we want organizations to come forward and we would encourage public health researchers to align themselves with organizations. However, we still want, one of our goals with this program is to build a platform of public health researchers, right? And public health champions rather. So if you are a public health researcher, we do want to hear from you. We do want you to be part of the journey. Uh, there are various capacities that we are working with public health champions. So please do reach out to us. Um, there are many ways this program uh, can be influenced in the right ways through the right public health champions. So do, we do encourage you to reach out to us, even if it's not just through a formal application for this tender. Can I apply for states outside of the ones? No, uh, we are. we want our partners to focus on the 12 states that are part of the program. Do we plan to award the tender to a single vendor? Ideally, no. This is possible in case you know we have uh, good applications from you know uh, vendors who are covering the full program. But we are looking at multiple partners for this program. Um, what are the timelines, and is there any flexibility? Uh, the te the tender document has gone into some detail in listing out the timeline. The whole program is intended to run for fifteen months. Uh, each stage has a range of a timeline because, as you can imagine, uh, within uh, within this program, there are many possibilities of, you know, a range of timelines. So do look at the tender document that actually lists out the exact timelines that we hope to uh, hope to achieve. Does the proposal need to include the actual problem statements? No. So when you submit your proposal, and, and the last date is the 29th of July, when you submit your proposal, we just want to see a methodology for how you would research the problem statements. We want you to provide sample solution stacks, a sample deployment plan, and a detailed outreach plan. This will not actually have the, the final problem statements because stage one, sorry, phase one, research phase, is where you will have about three months to actually come out with the problem statements. In terms of uh, organization turnover, uh, if your organization does not have a turnover, turnover of rupees one crore over the last two financial years, we will not be able to accept those applications. Um, again, in this case, uh, if you do apply as part of a consortium, we will be able to look into that as long as you know we have enough documented evidence and certified by a chartered accountant that the combined turnover is one crore or above for the last two financial years. We've got a bunch of questions on does the budget actually include the procurement of medical technologies? And uh, the response is no, this budget, the, the budget that you propose will not include the procurement cost. The procurement cost for the MedTech will be taken up separately by Selco Foundation. Um, for the next question again, how will the medical technologies be procured? Uh, the medical technologies could be procured in a range of ways. They could be procured directly by Selco Foundation, or we would arrange for procurement through our government partners 
but we do expect uh, our partners, our knowledge partners and your organizations to deliver detailed procurement guidelines. And we've given some details of this in the tender and in, in, in a follow-up question as well. Uh, right here, what are the main procurement guidelines expected from the partner? Uh, we have a comprehensive set of technical benchmarking this, that's been listed in the tender. What, what, what are all the technical details that we would need for the device? But beyond that, we would also need to have a process mapping for the procurement that would be done by the government or other deployment partners. So this would have to include um, any things like the minimum order quantity, the timelines, uh, certifications, uh, clinical validations, all of these things, and all of this stuff is listed in the tender document. Who is responsible for government facilitations? Well, this is primarily Selco Foundation's responsibility. One of our key goals in launching this tender and looking for partners is that we want our partners to bring in the government champion networks that are going to be critical for the success of this program. So we will surely have a preference for partners who can bring these networks, uh, who can work with government champions. And so Selco Foundation and the partner go together to uh, the, the decision makers within government health systems and help uh, deploy these innovative medical technologies. Can a bidder send proposals individually and part of a consortium? Yes, uh, the stronger bid will be considered in that situation. Uh, is the scope for medical technologies limited to energy efficient devices and what kinds of innovations are covered with this, within this? Now, like I said at the top of this call, it's a pretty broad range, right? We want to include innovative med medical technologies that, reduces the, that reduce the carbon footprint for the delivery of health services. This could include digital health apps, uh, digital health tools, such as apps for tracking high-risk pregnancies, wearable devices, telemedicine, lab equipment, and any technologies that justifiably reduce the transaction cost of availing health services, increase access to decentralized health services, and improve efficiencies by reducing wastage. Now, that's a pretty broad category. What we are looking for is a justification that the med tech actually meets these goals, right? Most of um, the contemporary digital health tools do fit this requirement. Uh, surely telemedicine, surely AI-driven uh, decentralized care, hub and spoke models for molecular testing, uh, all of these uh, med tech meets this requirement. One thing that we are going to put a lens on is saying, is the med tech proposed as energy efficient as it can be compared to uh, similar devices in the market? So that is a lens that we're going to put. But having said that, our, our, our scope of innovative med tech is pretty large. Um, that's the end of the FAQs. Uh, we have some links here and this video will be posted uh, on through the Selco website. So you can always find this video there. Uh, we do encourage you to keep sending us the queries, uh, follow on queries that you may have before you've submitted your proposal through procurement at selcofoundation.org. And uh, yeah, that's the, all I have. Just a shout out to Chandrayaan today launching to the moon once again. I'm gonna go into the Q&A a little bit. Um, the first question is, uh, we cannot upload sample reports as the contracts limit, uh, limit that, what to do in that case. Uh, we, we encourage you to actually get an approval from your previous uh, clients and we would not expect to see the full report and you can leave out, you know, sensitive elements also, but this would have to be, there would have to be enough information that we can cross verify the work that's been done. The second question is uh, the audited reports for 22, 23 are not available for the company, which is BDO India LLP. What do we do in that case? Uh, in this case, we will have to see a letter by the chartered accountant talking about the, 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 the turnover for the previous year. Does this assume that phase one is already done before applying for the tender? This, this question has already been answered. No, phase one is a separate phase where you actually come out with the actual problem statements. Prior to that, when you send in the application, we only want to see the number of problem statements that you will be applying for. Okay. Uh, the question is around functional office for the healthcare team is in Delhi. So do we have to submit GST number and files for Haryana state or Maharashtra state? Uh, we would we would get it from whatever is the registered office. So please submit any files from your registered office. Can can one unit have only one problem statement? No, uh, one unit has a minimum of three problem statements for one region. Will there be multiple awards or one single partner will be chosen for funding? Uh, I've already answered this. We would want to work with multiple vendors. Uh, 
Uh, and sorry, I think the message has been deleted, but uh, the answer is that no, that yes, there will be multiple awards and not just one vendor. Can we get an idea of how many beneficiaries are we looking at in each district? Uh, that's something that I think uh, as public health researchers and champions, you would have to kind of come back with, right? That how many beneficiaries does this problem statement affect? And how what, what is the potent, potential impact of the solution stack that we're putting out there? So that's surely something that we would expect you to tell us rather than the other way around. Is there a budgetary ceiling? Uh, like I've answered already, no, there's no budgetary ceiling. Uh, but we have a, a approximated pricing at a per unit level, which is about 18 to 20 lakhs. Uh, what will happen after 15 months? Uh, that's a good question because one of the key things that we are going to look at is how do we sustainably maintain the effect of our interventions, right? So we will want our partner to actually work with us to make sure that how the how, how the O&M processes and the longer term impact of embedding the technologies into state budgets and state plans can happen. So anything we do will have to have that that sight of how does this actually get embedded into the health system post the 15 months as well. We do implementations through partners. In that case, should our relevant implementing partner submit the tender? Uh, I would have to get more details on that, but you can apply as a consortium. You can uh, uh, maybe send us a more detailed question on that through, through the procurement address, and I, I may I will have to check and get back to you. The budget range that you have mentioned is approximately 20 lakhs, is for all four phases and three problems in one job. That, that's right. All three problem statements in one geographical unit. That's right. I think the next question is the same question. Um, do the, does the partner need to have knowledge on solar? Um, in this program, our focus is med tech, right? So this is not a solar specific program. So I would say no, but surely public health and med tech expertise is required. If the partner is a startup, it may not meet eligibility criteria three and four. In this case, can the startup form a JV with an established parent or associated entities from a different industry, which is into energy management? Sure, uh, a consortium or a JV of some kind is encouraged uh, so that, you know, but like I said, we would have to have one legal entity that we are interacting with. So a JV is just fine for that. Is the bidder allowed to bid twice? Uh, I think I've already answered this. Yes, you can bid twice separately and in a consortium. Is this fund under CSR? No, this is not under a CSR. This will be an independent contract between Selco Foundation and the Knowledge Partner. I think that may be it. That's all the questions. Uh, I will end the call here. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending. Like I said, we'll put this video up on the website. Uh, you can always send us follow-up questions at procurement at selcofoundation.org. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye.